Recently, Blackmagic became camera producers as well. You can have anything from the field production Ursa camera to studio cameras like these two in HD and 4K. The cool thing, really cool thing is these have a lot of parameters you can adjust through software using the ATEM software control panel to adjust iris, shutter speed, white balance, a lot of color correction parameters as well from a central location like your master control room. The only thing missing so far is to have a hardware interface to do this. CCU operators, they like to have knobs to pull. And now we have a solution, the Skahoy CCU unit. In this setup, we have now moved away the two studio cameras, so they are pointed in another direction, but still connected to an ATEM 2ME switcher. We have also two Skahoy units right here. The one is meant for regular switching, so we can do cut and T-bar transitions and all that stuff. Uh, that would be for the producer, and over here next to, we could have a CCU operator as a separate job function. When the CCU operator selects one of the sources, it will be shown here on this screen. It's connected to auxiliary 3 on the ASIM switcher, so you can see the camera sources adjusting uh, for. Uh, another important thing to mention is the fact that we don't need laptops connected, so we can just um, we can see that it will be possible to operate the, the switch totally independent of software on a laptop. We just include it so you can see parameters change on this screen as we go about the different dials and knobs on the CCU unit. Some of the most fundamental things in CCU operation is to adjust the iris and the pedestal. And those two things were traditionally done by joysticks which got stuck in the position where you left them, so you would have to have multiple devices, one for each camera. And while that might give you some advantages, it would also be both costly and take up a lot of space. So we thought how to solve this problem and integrated multi-turn dials on our CCU unit. So one knob will allow you to adjust the pedestal and the iris of multiple cameras at once or individually. So what you do basically is you select the camera and now I selected camera one. So you can see here how iris is adjusted by just turning the dial on this um, CCU controller. And uh, you see a small line in the display right there and that line is the limiting function adjusted by this knob. So what it basically does is it sets an upper limit to how open the iris can be of the lens, making sure that you don't overexpose your images. And this corresponds to the coarse adjustment that you find in the ATEM software control. And by the way, the ATEM software control you see on the screen will reflect the settings that we are now sending directly to the switcher from the CCU unit. So just to let you see what, what does this knob actually do in terms of what the software shows. And if I turn this knob, you can see over on the software control panel that this is um, this knob going up and down. And if I adjust the master pedestal, we go sideways. So this is the correspondence between the hardware knobs and the software over here. We have another cool feature, which is for any of these knobs, you can enable a fine tuning feature. So for instance, if you see I'm adjusting master black right here, if I press the button, you see we go to fine mode, and then for each time I turn the knob, I get smaller adjustments. So that's really useful. And by the way, if you press it and hold it, it will reset back to a center position. And that goes for all the knobs on the controller. The design of the camera selector is quite clever because it will adjust to how you configure your multi-viewer. So look at it right now. We have camera one in the upper left corner, but everything else is black. And the button in the upper left corner on the CCU unit will be selecting camera one. If I want to put camera five on the second field, all I would need to do is to select camera five for the second field in the ATEM software control, and that camera would be selected by this button. So in this case, I have that camera connected to camera two, so I'll select camera two, and you can now see camera one, camera two, and I have two buttons lighting up on the CCU unit. Likewise, I could put in camera three on the third button. Let's just do that quite quickly, although we have nothing connected. Okay, so operation is you press the camera you want to adjust, and it will light up camera two, camera three, and not only will the button light up, but you'll also see that the auxiliary output three of which one you co uh, configure will be shown on this monitor. You also see that we have red, green, and sometimes just plain yellow as the color of the buttons, 
And that depends on whether or not the sources are in program and preview. It has to be taken as a serious warning if you have a red blinking button because then you are adjusting a camera which are currently live. While if you have a green light, it means yes, the source is on preview, so you can safely adjust it, but it might go live in just a moment. So these colors are also reflected from the switcher over here. Finally, one of the most cool features is the fact that you can make multi-selections on this uh, camera selector. So say for instance you want to adjust both camera 1 and 2 in the, same, um, in the same go, you can simply hold this button and now both camera 1 and 2 is selected and when you turn the iris dial the settings for both cameras will be shown. We can quickly see that if we look at the software control over here you can see that the iris for both cameras are going up and down pedestal same thing sideways, simply because two cameras are selected at the same time. I know you have all been thinking, what is that cool button in the corner up there? It is a button, a rocker switch, so you can press on the bottom and the top and in the middle even, and it has a display. It's a menu. So when I select the camera and I press on the bottom, you see that it's cycling through various menu options. And one of them is lift. This is one of the um, well-known features from the ATEM software control color correction because it's the shadow adjustment, shadow color adjustment. And if you turn these knobs you have right here, you can see values are changing up here. This is the uh, pedestal actually. And then you can adjust red, green and blue as well. The values are adjusted and reflected in the displays. And you can also see the values are moving in the software control. If you take the master wheel in the software control, you will see that all four values are changed at once. Of course, those values are also reflected directly here because there's always a data correspondence between software and the controller since they take the same information out of the ATEM switcher, really. We can also link parameters together like that. If you press the button in the middle, then these four are now linked together. So as I adjust just one of them, you see that the others are following quite handy. If you cycle through the menu, you'll find gamma adjustment, you have gain adjustment, and then you arrive at camera. And the camera selection is basically that you can adjust camera gain. You can also change the shutter speed. You can adjust the white balance of the camera. It, even the focus can be adjusted using these dials. CSHL is contrast, saturation, hue and luminance mix. These features are found in the software control panel right there and they can be adjusted as well. That was the contrast. And finally you find two custom profiles and we're going to look at what that is now. In the web interface of your Skahoy CCU unit, you can configure the custom one and two profiles. And that basically means you decide what these four knobs and displays will correct, which settings are associated with them. So if you look at the web interface, you see usual stuff like setting the IP address of the device and the ATEM switcher IP address. You can also choose which multi-viewer should be used for uh, configuring the input selector and also which auxiliary output on the switcher should be used for the preview monitor. But the important thing in regard to the custom settings is the custom setting banks where you can select for any of these four knobs which of those 20, one or two different parameters you want to associate that knob with. And um, in this case we have associated them with um, pedestal and iris, pedestal and iris. So you may like to ask why did you actually choose pedestal twice and iris twice and I'll get back to that in a moment. On uh, custom settings too you see camera shutter, white balance gain and gain selected. So if we look at the controller and select say camera 2 and then we go to custom profile 1 you see that lift Y and iris is selected here and um, I'll just go to the software control panel so you can also see that in the background right here. So if I adjust iris, you see the setting is going up and down and sideways here. 
You may now ask, how is that different from these two knobs? It's not. It's actually exactly the same. But the point is, if you had a multi-camera selection, like now, then the other two buttons are enabled as well. So if you adjust the pedestal of camera one, as you can see, it goes sideways here and pedestal on camera two. But let's say that you want to raise the pedestal for both cameras at once, then you do it on this button. So that's actually pretty cool, especially if as a CGU operator, you like the fact that your joysticks were stuck in the positions where you left them, you sort of have the same possibility of configuring a custom profile of iris adjustments on these knobs, and then they will be there for all camera one, two, three, and four individually, or you can make a global iris adjustment using the iris dial. So that's one of the cool things you can do with custom profiles. On custom profile two, we sort of did the same, but here you see that we have shutter speed and white balance, which will be adjusted for all selected cameras. And then we have two gain settings, which are for individual cameras again. And you can see in the displays that this setting is for camera one. It's set with a small label there, and then camera two with this one. While these two say rel, which means relative, it means when we turn the knob, the adjustment of that knob will be relative to the value that is already present for shutter or white balance for that particular camera. So they won't get the same value when you turn the knob. They'll be adjusted relatively to what they already have had uh, in their setting.